What's going on everyone? Welcome to a Movie Emporium review of A Christmas Story Christmas, the sequel to the original famous classic that is A Christmas Story. That was, of course, uh, directed by Bob Clark, based off Gene Shepard's stories. Uh, this, of course, is a film directed by Clay Cadis, because, of course, Bob, Bob Clark is dead, and Gene Shepard has passed away as well. Uh, this, of course, brings back Peter Billingsley. It brings back Scott Shores, R.D. Robb, Zach Ward, you know, a lot of people from the original film. It also adds in, you know, Ralphie has, of course, a, a wife and two kids at this point. And uh, it's um, what I would call a very contentious se sequel. Not saying that I thought it was bad. It was a very contentious sequel because of course the christmas story is a classic about P uh, ralphie wanting a, a bb gun you know the red rider bb gun this time it takes place in the 70s uh he is a writer trying to make himself a writer trying to you know had the success he's uh, his wife has allowed him to take like a year off to write he keeps getting rejected and he needs to find his spark unfortunately the old man passes away because darren mcgavin has passed away at this point and he goes back to uh, Indiana to kind of write an obituary for his father and try and find his spark, you know, because he's being keeps being rejected, uh, as well as, you know, try to have a good Christmas for his family. You know, he has a wife and of course, uh, two kids at this point. And it's, uh, it's a movie that brings back like a lot of people that you would expect, you know, randy and you know f the the bumpuses and scott farkas and you know uh schwartz and all all these characters his friends and stuff like that and um this is a movie that i wasn't anticipating i i understand why they're doing it because hbo max needs stuff uh christmas story is famous peter billingsley and vince vaughn uh were producers for this film so they were you know brought in to take care of like you know bringing a sequel to this property i guess you could say i never felt you know there's already been two sequels there was like a, a christmas story 2 and then there was like a, a summer story or something like that and I never felt this movie needed, the original movie needed a sequel. It's one of those things where you're kind of wondering what was the point. And it's just because HBO Max needed something for Christmas, like 8-Bit Christmas last year. But with that said, having like Pierre Billingsley come back, he narrates the movie. Having the idea of the, the old man passing and what that means... And the idea of like the Christmas story in general and what that what that entails is this worth watching? Is it something that feels uh, earned and honest and stuff like that? And it's not a very good movie to be fairly honest. It's a movie that has a lot of like sequelitis problems where you know they do some things that are like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? <laughs> You're trying to be funny, but you're not funny. It's one of those problems where it feels like a very uh, lesser sequel in a lot of respects. And I think that's movie, this movie's main problem is what the story is trying to do is also be an origin story for the original film with the, the narration and Peter Billingsley, of course, being a writer and what that entails and how it's going to lead to this conclusion, which you can kind of see coming if you think about it with the idea of what the G Shepherd was doing in the, in the first movie and stuff like that with his narration. It's a movie that shows you what happens when, you know, the, the main characters who are popular get older and stuff like that. Sorry, I'm like shaking all over the place. It's just the fact that I'm holding the camera, but it's not a bad movie. It really isn't. It really does have a lot of heart. You know, unfortunately, Ju Julie Haggerty is brought in to play the mother, the, the grandmother, the old, you know, the, the mother of Ralphie and, you know, Melinda Dillon was the main character in the original film and she didn't want to come back because she's retired. And I get it. It's fine. But I don't think Julie Haggerty really works in the role, to be fairly honest. It's different. It feels more of not earnest, I guess you could say. It feels very weird. It feels very Jer Julie Haggerty, I guess you could say. And that's it is what it is. But but then there's a lot of stuff where like, you know, uh, Flick has a bar in this movie and that takes place and Schwartz is you know, an individual that uses his bar tab as kind of a crutch and he feels like a kind of a, a bar fly in a lot of respects. And there's a lot of like, you know, Ralphie kind of remembering back to his childhood and stuff like that. And they're doing a lot of nostalgia, which is what I would expect. But it does take away from this movie's kind of what it's trying to represent. And it kind of goes beat by beat with what you expect. And I think what the, the idea of the original movie and how earnest and honest it was I don't think that happens here. I think it's more a little by the books for a sequel, to be fairly honest. And that is problematic. Like the kid, like all the actors who were in the original movie come back and you could tell they're not like great actors. You know, the character who plays, I think it's Scott Schwartz or something like that, who I think was in the toy. You know, you can tell he hasn't acted for a while. R.D. Robb, who plays, or no, Schwartz is, I'm sorry, Flick is the uh, Scott Schwartz character. R.D. Robb plays, anyways, 
they don't look like they've been acting for a while which is a which is a problem so and then like i said the whole family dynamic feels really kind of forced in and stuff like that and the idea of a, a failed writer is very by the books and predictable and you know it is what it is but it's still it's not a bad movie it's not like the other two sequels that came out which were just like kind of nonsense i guess you could say it really does feel like a sequel and i think to be fairly honest not having darren mcgavin and it really does kind of even though he's passed away not having his character in the movie really feels off but it does give it a sincerity of like how time and passage and the remembrance of everyone how it affects you in your kind of long run and like I said, this is kind of an origin story of the lead up to the Christmas story. So you kind of hear how the development of that happens, which leads to the conclusion. So with that said, I enjoyed the movie. It's not a great movie. It's not what I would call the greatest movie ever. It has problems. It has, you know, very sequelitis problems. But I think there is an earnest there. I think there's an honesty there. I think there is, you know, when it when it beats by beats the moments like that feel very authentic. I, I think it works. I just think it, it does what it most like direct the video sequels do, which is problematic and it brings back people who are just there for a paycheck, to be fairly honest, or who show up for a couple minutes. Like Zach Ward doesn't show up for very long in this movie. He plays Scott Farkas and you know, the guy who played Grover Dills in this for like a couple seconds. And like I said, Randy's only in for a couple seconds because they know they're not actors. They're there to fulfill roles for a sequel to A Christmas Story. So anyways, with that said, that's going to be my take on A Christmas Story Christmas, which is now on HBO Max. Uh, definitely give it a watch. No, you're not going to get the the like, true honest sequel to Christmas Story in like a classic sense, but I think you'll enjoy it for what it's worth. So anyways, with that said, that'll do it. Thank you so much for watching. Comments below. Let me know what you think of this movie if you watch it. If you, if you feel like it's not your type of thing or you have a problem with it being a sequel, I understand. I was definitely there with you. So anyways, with that said, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button, the Join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next. And if you liked the video, awesome. Hit that like button and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.